Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Boisterous coming to you with some Platinum League Pandemonium out of the map Whirlwind LE. Spotting up here in the top left hand corner, we do have Ip Master as our red Protoss player. And up here in the top right hand corner, we have his opponent for today. It's going to be the blue Zerg Nazareth with his awesome looking Overlord skins that I don't have yet because I'm a friggin' noob. Other than that, I just don't have them turned on. I'm like a level 26 Zerg. I probably have the Overlord and the Zergling skins, I just don't turn them on for whatever reason. I don't know, I like, you know, I like the old ones purely because these new ones are so easy to get that everyone uses them. So, like, there's nothing really special about them. I like the old ones because they're, they're at least unique. Like, you don't see them a whole lot. That and the old Zerglings look a lot better with Metabolic Boost. The new ones, like, they don't change enough for me. Uh, they look, they look sim, they look too weird without Metabolic Boost. And then they just don't look anything different than the regular ones with Metabolic Boost. So it's not really a big trade-off for them. It looks like we are going to have a Master going for a Forge Fast Expand, which is not too much of a surprise on the map. However, he's definitely, he's definitely getting it in an interesting position. This pylon, I want to say it's a little bit too far up, but I guess you could go like Forge, Gateway, Cyber Core, and then single units to wall off down here. Well, that's a weird wall off. Hmm. I wonder how he's going to do it. It looks like he is going to have a probe up here by the Nexus. He might be preparing to drop a Nexus extremely fast on this map, which is not too much of a surprise considering the fact that it is Whirlwind, and Whirlwind is a map that is extremely large and extremely hard to pressure, um, even if your opponent does go for something insane like that fast of a Nexus. Now, of course, this probe is a... You know, he's, he's being a little bit of a jackass, not doing his job completely. However, it will certainly be a Nexus first. We do, of course, have the Natri first down, or the Hatchery first down for Nazareth, which isn't too much of a surprise. I mean, ZVP, players have kind of been shifting away from it. But if you can do it, it's still definitely a boon to yourself to do it. Is this Nexus off by a Hex? Is it? I think it might be. I can't really tell. But I... It looks like it's off by a hex. It looks like it's way closer up here than it is over here. But I have no actual idea. That might just be like the tr a trick of like the way that the stuff is proportioned on the screen. Hmm. I, I have the deepest feeling that that's off by a hex though. Although I guess, I guess it's not completed yet, so the circle is going to be a little bit in a strange position. I guess we'll be able to tell once the Nexus actually finishes up whether that's off or not. I have the odd itching suspicion that it actually is, but I know that I'm probably wrong, because I'm always wrong on stuff like this. It looks like he actually went for a gate first, so it Master definitely playing the ballsy role this game. Um, and this wall is not going to be complete for quite a long time. I mean, Nazareth is going to, I mean, he's going to be perfectly fine purely because Nazareth is not going for any sort of aggression, like, at all. We do have a spawning pool finally finished, and an uh, extractor is now coming up. But, you know, there's not going to be anything super aggressive coming up for quite a long time. And it looks like this will be starting to get extracted. Um, and he will be getting that Zergling speed up at a reasonable time. However, I, it Master will have, you know, defenses ready by the time that he's ready to go. It looks like this wall off could be prone to a Baneling bust, uh, purely because this pylon on this side is kind of in a dangerous position. And then if you can get that pylon down, you can kind of swing up north and kill off this other pylon. And then, you know, once you kind of unpower everything at the front, uh, your opponent's pretty much trashed. Like, there's a not a whole lot they can do about that. It looks like we are going to have the Cybernetics Core finishing up at this point. I would not be too surprised to see a Stalker coming out anytime soon after this. However, Warp Gate will probably be started before that. Nazareth does, of course, have his hatchery on the way, and I don't know why. I need to, like, defrag my computer because, God, it's lagging so, it's lagging so oddly when it never did before whenever I used Fraps on StarCraft. Hmm. Hmm. Or maybe I just need to turn down some of the StarCraft stuff that nobody actually ever sees. Like maybe the fire effects. The fire special effects might not be the most required thing ever. However, anyway, we are going to have this pro moving out to the Zelnaga Watchtower, and it will be able to take that thing on and see the entirety of the map, or well, the entire center of the map, which is basically enough against the Zerg player, because uh, Zergs, if they're going to go for a heavy aggression, they're going to send units around this corner, which is a huge, huge thing to know. Because if they're ever sending an attack on you, unless they do it very, very deliberately to not go, to like, go around up here and then down here and then up here, um, you're gonna know they're coming. I guess they could also go like up 
here and then weave like that. However, it would be a little bit more awkward um, than just sending the A move. And a lot of players, at least not until the high levels, when they really, really know that their cheese has to work, um, they're not going to go for anything crazy like that. It looks like we do have a couple of queens moving down here to the fourth base. And actually, this is the queens from the natural. So, eh, no, he has queens in production. Never mind, I was going to say he's a little bit silly, but yeah, he's not silly at all. This is actually perfectly standard. It looks like we are going to have six Zerglings chasing away the Zealot. They should be able to pick that thing off if they go for the full surround. And here the Zealot is going to try to get as good of a position as possible, which is pretty fancy. However, it just was not enough. That Zealot did not have enough life to live at all. So it looks like we are going to have Nazareth taking over the Zelda Lego Watchtower in the center of the map. At the same time, we do have Ip Master dropping down a Stargate along with three additional gateways. These are actually pretty late gateways, so we are going to see some serious Stargate pressure coming out of him because he saved a lot of money to drop into that Stargate. It looks like we do have the Cybernetics Core finishing up Warp Brigade at this time, so we are going to have a four Warp Gate plus Stargate of possible pressure here. Uh, it is Phoenixes, which isn't too much of a surprise. Uh, Phoenixes are extremely good units. I mean, you've seen a lot more players switch more heavily into Void Rays and into Oracles lately, just because Oracles are amazing and Void Rays are really fancy. And uh, with their with the new way that uh, Photon Overdrive works, or whatever it's called, Crystal Realignment, I, I forget what it's called, whatever that is called, um, works. It, it helps out a lot when you're fighting off against overlords or you're fighting off against buildings in general. It looks like we do have sport crawlers coming down now, which is not too much of a surprise considering the fact that there are, of course, phoenixes on the field. So it is going to be five sport crawlers actually coming down, which is a lot considering the fact that it's only like two phoenixes. Um, and there, there are a couple of these bases that could really hold their own just because they have a couple of queens. However, you, you should always be more safe than sorry. It looks like we are going to have Nazareth with a nice scouting Zergling coming down here to the southern edge. They will be able to see that. Um, and he will be sending down a patrol of Zerglings to clean that up. It is only three sentries at this point. And actually, three sentries might be able to hold their own if they get really good force fields. But, I mean, it's going to waste off a lot of energy uh, to be able to take out these Zerglings. And actually, some beautiful control from uh, from Ip Master will be able to keep one of these sentries alive. I mean, it would have. I thought it would have kept another one alive, but he didn't actually get the warp in on that Zealot started soon enough. Because uh, that was actually a really badass way to drop his force fields. If he had dropped it, this one just a little bit tighter onto the Vespine Geyser, it would have been absolutely perfect. It looks like we are going to be going up to three Phoenixes at this point. Alongside a Zealot. Zealot, of course, does not. The Zealots, of course, do not have plus one yet. So this is actually just going to be an absolute, you know carnage for the Protoss player. He's going to get everything cleaned up here. These Zerglings should be able to move on and take out this pylon. And, you know, that's a little bit of a bad situation. We have a lot more Zerglings coming in. They will, of course, be going right for those Zealots. And these Zealots might be able to fight off this platoon of Zerglings. However, we do have all these Zerglings down to the south being able to snipe off that pylon. And some very nice control from Nazareth will be able to get that pylon killed and then get a nice surround on these last few Zealots to clean them up. And wow, that was that was actually really well controlled by our blue Zerg player. Um, and honestly, it Master really hasn't been doing anything with this with this uh, harassment so far. He's basically just been kind of sitting there with his phoenixes. And that's not what he needs. He needs to be starting to think about doing damage. Now, of course, Nathasrith probably won't be able to break into this base despite having so many freaking Zerglings purely because of the fact that Ipmaster has that uh, has those sentries, and sentries are very, very good when it comes to holding off Zerglings. And, you know, two sentries with full force fields will be able to hold this ramp for about a minute, uh, which, is enough, which is enough time to warp in four more sentries and just keep it permanently walled off. It looks like we are going to have the Flood of Zerglings coming up here to snipe off yet another proxy pile on though, which is just annoying, honestly. These Zerglings are being cost effective purely because there's so many of them and there's only one Void Ray, and that Void Ray really can't do enough damage to these, to these Zerglings to justify, you know, the cost that's being spent by it Master to fight these guys off. And uh, at this point, Nazareth is going to be going up to an almost fully saturated third base, which is quite nice, pretty fancy to have that. Uh, this early in the game, he is of course going to be getting his extractors fairly soon. I would not be too surprised to see another base coming down, perhaps this one? Um, but at the same time, he does have the slightly faster army, so this one could be taken. He would just really need to get those spore crawlers up extremely fast, or he, would, or he really wouldn't be able to deal with anything. It looks like we do have a hive on the way, along with plus two, plus two, and muscular augments. So we are going to see some hydralisk play coming out of our player. Not too much of a surprise, considering the fact that uh, it Master is going very, very heavily into the air play. Oh my god, it Master leaving his door open. Nazareth almost could have taken control of that, but he just did not send his units up there. And, you know, it's 
it's not something that you should normally check, but whenever you're in like a Platinum League or something, you should always check if your opponent just leaves a door open. Because the thing is, is that losing all these Zerglings sucks, but it's not nearly as bad as like being able to break into the main base, getting a full scout off, and managing to kill off some probes. Like that's just freaking phenomenal. Um, and it's worth it, you know, to, to have the opportunity to go for it, it's worth it to lose a fair amount of Zerglings. Especially considering the fact that when he's facing off against an army that's just like Zealot Sentry, uh, those zealots and zealot sentries aren't going to be able to get into position fast enough to actually kill off all of the zerglings. So only a couple will die, and those couple, and most of those will die to photon cannons. Uh, but anyway, it looks like we are going to have the ultralisk cavern on the way for Nazareth, and he is going to be going for an ultra hydralisk ling composition, which is pretty interesting. It's not something you see too much nowadays, especially against Protoss players. I mean, I, I guess. Hmm. Usually against Protoss players, you've been seeing a lot of Swarm Host heavy play, but I've been watching a lot of European tournaments, and that's kind of what the European style has been of late. Um, I, I guess in North America, you still see enough of these plays that are just like Ling Hydra Ultralisk plays, or even just Ling Ultralisk, or even Infestors getting mixed in there nowadays. Um, it, it's definitely possible. I also see quite a few Corruptors being used, but Ultralisks are definitely starting to become kind of the favored unit just because they have more mobility than Broodlords and they're a lot tankier and they can kind of, they, they deal a lot better with just head-on engagements and so long as you can get the, the plus five, plus three Ultralisks, you're going to be set for quite a while. It looks like we are going to have a Dark Shrine on the way for Imp Master, so he's definitely going to be playing a little bit of an iffy style here. Um, I like Dark Shrines late in the game purely because they're great at harassing units and they really force your opponent to be in position all the time. However, when you go for something like a Stargate early in the game, your opponent's gonna be in position. He's gonna have that Spore Crawlers ready to go. And unless you send them in, you know, into the main base directly, uh, there's gonna be Spine Crawlers at a lot of these bases purely because it's like, oh, well, I have enough drones where I can kind of build a couple of Spine Crawlers, I might as well. It looks like we are going to have five Ultralisks on the way, along with Adrenal Glance, plus three, plus three, and shit, and Chitinous Plating. So this push from Nazareth is going to be quite scary in about 30-ish seconds. I'm actually not sure if these Ultralisks will be, able, will be able to escape from this base, though. I guess maybe if he lifts up this Spore Crawler, but this is definitely going to be awkward. Oh wait, no, those are all Zerglings. Oh wait, no, those two are Ultralisks. And yeah, they can walk right out. And he does have the Torescu Ultralisk in, which makes me just, you know, feel that Nazareth is in a very good position this game, because let's be honest. Look at them Ultralisks. Demo badass Ultralisk. I mean, like, you just can't even argue the fact that the freaking uh, Terrascu Ultralisks look absolutely awesome. It looks like this Hadri will get sniped by Dark Templar, which is quite annoying for Nazareth. However, it's not really the end of the world, as he does have an almost maxed out army, and that's all that he really cares about. We are going to have a lot of creep spread going down here finally, so he will just be able to transfer Spore Crawlers the next time he tries to get this base up. Um, it looks like one Spore Crawler will get sniped here. It will actually be cancelled, which is pretty nice. Uh, the Overseer is on the way, however, However, at the same time, this Overseer does not have Overseer speed yet, so it will be extremely slow, but that will be picked off eventually. If we look at the main army of Imp Master, he does have quite a few Void Rays, and these Void Rays will work wonders when it comes to taking out those Ultralisks. The only issue is, is that like if this Zergling army can just smash through the front, which, to be honest, with an army that Imp Master has right now is quite possible, because the Zealots just aren't nearly as upgraded as these Ultralisks are, and these Ultralisks are going to be absolutely frightening when actual engagements go down. I could see it being quite possible for Nazareth to just win the game purely because his army is freaking scary. Uh, a big issue though is the fact that he just does not have overseers with his army. There the overseers are finally here. He really needs to get that speed boost. He, he's not even working on it right now, but that, uh, that speed boost for those overseers is amazingly important when it comes to trying to get them to actually match speed with the rest of your army. It looks like we are going to have these ultras kind of just sitting in the middle of nowhere. He will be going right for the main base with a giant pack of Zerglings, which is a very, very smart decision. Um, all of these Zerglings are going to be amazingly annoying, and they will be going right for the production. If we look into this uh, army fight right now, though, we do have so many Void Rays just roasty and toasting through everything. There is absolutely no Hydralisks left. It looks like he will be able to snipe off all of the Colossi, but I'm not sure if that's enough. He does need to start the uh, Hydralisk production up super duper fast, or he's going to be, get, be getting absolutely wrecked right now. The only big thing is that Imp Master is losing so much of his production to this massive swell of Zerglings, and these Dream Glance 3 3 Zerglings are absolutely frightening when it comes right on down to it and uh you know the main army from it master is actually just sacrificing his main base i am not sure if i agree with this decision i mean his opponent doesn't have a whole lot of detection but at the same time you never want to fight on creep against this sort of an army 
um, purely because these Hydralisks are going to be so, so, so mobile. It looks like these Zerglings will be able to get into the main base and they will be able to snipe off most of the production. They won't be able to get all of it as there will be Dark Templars there to clean up uh, quite a few of them, but it will stop and kind of hurdle everything that Imp Master is trying to do at this point. This is basically Imp Master's final push right now. And he's in a good position, but as soon as he moves up into those base, he's going to start getting into an awkward spot. Um, it looks like we are going to have a couple of Ultralisks popping out right now, which are going to be huge. It looks like these Dark Templar are going to be in an amazingly annoying position. However, the Hydralisks are going to be swinging up right now. We do have nice control of those Ultralisks, going to be pulling them back from those Void Rays. The Void Rays are just targeting the Hydralisks, which, although it's a reasonable decision, he really needs to be taking out of those Ultralisks, and it looks like these Void Rays will be falling right now. 0-0 zero, zero Void Rays, just not enough to take care of that Hydralisk army, plus the Ultralisks on the side. And honestly, Ip Master, having lost all of his production in his main base, he can basically make like one Colossus and one Warp Gate unit at a time. Actually, three Warp Gate units at a time, but that really does not matter when it comes to the production of the Zerg player. It looks like we are going to have Dark Shrine getting produced yet again, but I'm not sure if it will really matter as we are going to have a lot of overseers morphing in and moving out with this army. We are going to have the Zerg Force moving in to the third base of his opponent and these guys should be able to do a reasonable amount of damage. There are quite a few Photon Cannons here but I'm just not sure if it even matters uh, as Banelings are just going to be super duper strong. It looks like one Colossus is going to be doing his absolute best here but it's just not going to be enough as we do see these Ultralisks just rolling through the force. We have quite a few uh, DTs just continuing to be super duper annoying here. However, with three Overseers on the way, it should be a pretty straightforward thing to clean these guys up reasonably soon. However, Nazareth really should be winning the game right now. The only reason he's not is he took is it took so long for him to actually retake it, one of his fourth bases that Ip Master is actually on even bases now. Of course, considering how much technology was sniped from Ip Master, I highly doubt he can pull back from a situation like this. But I, I mean it's not it wouldn't be one of the most ridiculous comebacks I've ever seen in a game. The only big thing is that uh, Nazareth already has full upgrades. He's not worrying about upgrading anymore. Whereas Imp Master is only at 2-1, and 2-1 is not very strong when you consider it against 5-3 Ultralisks. 5-3 Ultralisks are just absolutely terrifying units of destruction. And it looks like they will be moving out at this point. And this is a lot of Ultralisks along with quite a few Zerglings and Banelings and Hydralisks. Oh my. And I, I don't know if Imp Master is going to be able to hold off this push. Um, he does have a couple of Colossus, but you know, a couple of Colossus in one Archon isn't going to stop the Wrecking Ball that is this many Ultralisks. He really needs something that can just take out Ultralisks, and sadly all of his Void Rays uh, did get sniped. So we are going to see the Zerg uh, Swarm just completely overrun his opponent at this point, which is not too surprising. It looks like we are going to have the uh, Phoenix getting sniped here. We have a lot of Dark Templar trying to warp in, but uh, the Overseers are still alive, so that's just not going to work. And we are going to see the third base from Ip Master get crushed here. And after this, I, I mean, this uh, this this Ultralis Correcting Ball can really just roll wherever. It does not even matter anymore. Ip Master is on one base. He is going to have four Warp Gates of production. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I don't think this is going to happen. Ip Master getting a little bit angry at the end, you know, un understandable, but again, Ip Master, if you ever see this game, and I doubt, I somehow doubt you will, you gotta get those upgrades, man. 1-2 one, one, Colossus, not gonna live against those 5-3 Ultralisks. It's, it's just not gonna happen. These Ultralisks are going to not take any damage from Colossus. If we look at Colossus, Ultralisks are gonna be taking 26 damage per shot. It's gonna take you 20 Col Colossus hits to kill an Ultralisk. Think about 20 Colossus shot. That's like 30 seconds to kill one Ultralisk. Whereas Ultralisks are going to kill your Colossus in about... Four hits, five hits, and ultra swing a lot faster, and it's just going to be absolutely scary. So anyway, guys, if you liked this video, and if you'd like to see more, you head on over to youtube.com slash user slash boisterous sc2. If you want your games commentated by me, send them into boisterous sc2 at gmail.com. I'd like to thank you all for watching this. I will have a couple of extra series on the way next week. Um, I'm not sure what they're going to be yet, but I'll figure it out, and I'll, and I'll start uploading them soon. So anyway, guys, this is Boisterous, signing out.